You know what? Athens are strange. Here you can walk just 100 meters from the famous Acropolis, through the bars of the tourist crowds and the hipster Monasteraki district, and then you start feeling unsafe. Streets get empty, graffiti is more violent, buildings are more abandoned, signs in the stores are not in Greek. And you wonder, what's wrong with this city? After all, isn't that the oldest city in the world and the cradle of all the European civilization? I've had so many questions in my mind and I had to find the answers. It's probably associate Athens with Olympus, with Acropolis and Parthenon, or at least Gyros. But today we are going to uncover a shady part of Athens. We are going to talk about the problems that are never told to tourists or people just close their eyes and don't want to talk about them. It's the refugee crisis, it's the crisis of 2008, economy of Greece. And we are going to do that with a professional in the economics and politics who will tell us what's the problem, why some districts in Athens looks like this one. They are pretty, people live there, enjoy, they have nice shops and why some are decaying, ruined, even if they have the heritage there, why there are problems with narcotics and why the emigrants settle there and how do they feel. That's what we are going to talk about. Let's go. Athens are truly a mirror of social disorder. It's a contrasting city where tourists, immigrants, street vendors and passers-by bump into each other, passing through it in a rush. What strikes you first in the ancient town is that there is almost no old architecture, with a few exceptions. The entire city is filled with blocks of apartments, almost like in my dear Moscow. That's a result of the post-World War II construction boom, when the population had grown from 1 to 4 million and it turned the housing experiment into an architectural disaster. All these people were not only Greek. They were coming from Albania and Romania and that's why now, when you walk around central Athens, you even don't see native Greek people. All of them have moved from the city center closer to nature and quietness. But not all of the people in Athens can afford such a block of apartments for $150 per month. You see the door in the basement? People live there too, underground, in groups of 20. And that leads us to another chapter, the refugee crisis. There are two things that have shaped modern Athens. First is the economic crisis of 2008, after which most of the businesses is closed. And the second thing is the refugee crisis of 2015. First can still be seen. Almost every second business in non-touristic Athens is closed. Former restaurants, bars, banks, hotels, they were prosperous in the 80s and 90s, but they are just the ghost of the former life now. Second, the refugee crisis is still a huge problem. Greece was caught unprepared to receive record numbers of refugees since World War II. The EU shut its border to Greece in 2016 to prevent refugees from moving further up the continent, leaving one million people trapped here. Official. Most of them are sent to the refugee camps on the islands where they have to wait for several years until they get the asylum and the work permit. They are in the loop, sitting on islands without a permit to live or to work. What can they do? Only one thing. Quit the camp and try to find the unofficial job in the city. And where do you go where you have nowhere to go. In Athens there is a place. It's called the Victoria Square. Job for one euro per hour mm. or something like that. In so all our unofficial area. jobs. Like, but... Less than one percent gets uh, official. Yeah. By the evening this place is filled with refugees who are searching for smugglers for the way to cross the borders from Greece to Northern Europe. The bribe to cross one border cost them around $1,000. And on the way, there are up to 10 borders. Where do they get $10,000? Uh, 
And now we are on the main square of Victoria, where all the refugees come to escape from Greece, to buy the ticket away. And as Isaac told us here, they can even sell like their organs or children just to get this like 10,000 to cross all the borders to the country they want to come. So in theory, the EU is giving like 8,000 euros per person, mm -hmm. but no, it doesn't, it doesn't go to the refugees. Mm -hmm. It goes to the government. Some of them try to stay in Greece and try to build their new life there. This abandoned hotel, for example, was squatted by refugees, but not in a way you might imagine. Half of them were children and parents and volunteers who tried to make this place alive again and tried to provide all of the necessities like education, they were making shifts on cooking, of cleaning up the place and restoring it. And now it's abandoned again. No one needs it. It's not going to be a good investment anytime soon. It's not going to turn into a luxury hotel for the tourists. Uh, an infrastructure which is not used by many reasons, economic reasons, and give it to to the social reasons that it's meant to be covered right now in an emergency situation. They don't sit around and wait for months for permission. They see what positive things they can do and they just do it. How many other gaps and buildings will stay empty and decaying while thousands and thousands of people are ready to move in to restore them and to make a proper home for their families? That was my question. And I still don't have an answer. So what makes a good city? I've always thought that it's not the government, but more the communities. Passing the Victoria Square, you see less and less white people and dipping into how multicultural and strangely safe it feels. If I compare it to Moscow, where we don't have any Chinatown, we don't have multicultural communities, Athens feel really cool. I was so excited here to grab a falafel from the Syrian store or to pass by the Chinese noodles and to see the Bangladeshi people selling their chewing leaves. I've seen these things for the first time in my life. There are no hipsters who come here. So now I come in here to your food that is authentic, cheap with a hipster. Say you're into falafel. This is a falafel paradise. You got Iranian falafel, Syrian falafel, Afghan falafel, Egyptian falafel, mm -hmm. Kurdish, Iraqi, Arab, Iraqi, sub regional bands. I try all the uh, expert in falafel, okay? Mm -hmm. They are quite cheap, like one euro or one euro and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is this the sound? Is this the Muezzin calling for prayer or not? No, no, no. Because it's, it's it feels what, like what, he's selling sure. watermelons. Okay, oh, no. it's it's just, watermelon. <laughs> it sounds like a call to prayer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see the watermelons? You see them? Oh. <laughs> and I think that these communities don't make cities uncomfortable. No, it's actually opposite. They keep it lively. They invest their culture, their efforts, their money, and they make this place their home. And it's very important that real people and communities occupy this place, and not the criminals. Because there are abandoned streets, just a few blocks away, and they are really scary. You can see people taking drugs right on the street and laying there unconscious. And again, just passing to the next street, you see a totally different picture. There is the exact line that separates the world of Hipster Monastiraki district and the shady world of the criminal streets. Suddenly, you see only white people again, with their iPhones taking pictures of the beautiful graffiti street. Everybody's white. Mm. Not white, green, like white, white. Uh, Till is white. Like this guy. White. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
So in fact, like to save the city, to make the area more comfortable, you like attract tourists, attract people, people by creating art, by creating some like local cafes, etc. Right, and it becomes safer also. And increases the prices. Yeah. And the China in her Pakistan is legal. And it was the governmental, or yeah, yeah, that looks like really hipster area. <laughs> so from this point on, everything is 100% tourist. Mm -hmm. There are no humans living. Mm. This is the kitchen. There are hipster barber shops, tattoo wow. parlors. On one side, the abandoned homes and trucks. On the other side, fancy hotels and hipster wine bars. Here is the answer. Gentrification. What happened here in Athens should be really an example for the architects and urbanists. Gentrification came. So that dog that I just showed you, it participated in the riots and it was helping people to cope with police. And after all, its lungs were damaged and it died. So now it's like a hero of the freedom movement of Greece. And have a look just near the Bangladesh area and near Pakistani area. You have all of this fancy street art. You have the gentrification that came. Isn't it unbelievable how the businesses and tourists can bring investment? Voila, here is the recipe for fighting crime and bringing investment in the place which seemed hopeless. Honestly, for me, Athens are more than just a city. They are a tough nut to crack. Not the prettiest place in the world, but such a meaningful and really life-changing experience. The city really reflects our modern world. It shows the poverty and heritage. It shows the diversity and the respect to different cultures. It teaches you to appreciate the simple things like your own home. And after visiting this place, I can clearly see one thing. Athens are only for true explorers.